In this video I'm going to show you guys how to start with the Carbot. It's the robot that you see with the Ford large wheels on it and four motors and a bump switch. So I'm going to go to files and I want to create a new folder in intro to robotics. So robotics you have all these intro to robotics folders and in this one create a new folder called Carbot Challenge and then that should be empty in there. So a new folder called Carbot Challenge inside of your robotics folder. So if I click on that it should say yours would say my documents robotics and then Carbot Challenge up here. And then create a new file, so new, I can just click on that, new file, file, save as, and I want to save it in my robotics folder under Carbot Challenge, so this is going to be 3.27.17 Carbot Challenge. Save. <clears throat> and let's start off by checking our stuff. Platform type, Cortex, natural language, PLTW, USB only, compiler target, score up. Perfect. And motor and sensor setup. So the Carbot has four motors, and they're set up. They should be set up correctly already. If they're not, um, I'll have a video that shows you exactly how they should be set up. So we have motors in port one, two, nine, and ten, and I believe that. So, port one should be front left, port two should be, no, no, hold on, port two is Back left, port 10 would be front right, and then back right. And these are all VEX 393s. If you're curious as to why I set it up like this, you'll find out why once you um, look at the robots. Realize that port 2 through 9 require a 3 wire plug in, whereas port 1 and port 10 only require a 2 wire plug in. And your motor naturally only has 2 wire plug ins, so I can plug in those two motors into port 1 and 10. The other two motors I have to have these extension wires attached to them that allow that to become a three wire and then I plug them in just next to these guys just to make it easier. The other thing you have on there is a bump switch. And that is a touch sensor. Apply and okay. And what you're going to try and do is uh, back behind my desk at the front of the class, or sorry, in the in the classroom where my desk is, behind me by the projector screen, 
you'll see a little track. It's in blue tape. So your uh, robot's going to need to go around that track in order to complete it. And you'll end up doing that with a partner. So I know that I'm going to need to create a loop because this thing is going to have to run off of the orange cord. Okay, we can't have it dragging the computer. That's just not going to work. So we're going to create a loop. Loops do need their own curly braces. And then we're going to create an if statement. So if. And we're going to do sensor value. And I haven't compiled yet. That's why my bump switch isn't showing up. So I'm going to compile and then some errors are going to show up. Yelp. That's fine. But now bump switch shows up. And equal equal to one. A lot of students forget to put that one and they get an error here. And this needs its own curly braces. So I'm going to start off by I the the car bot just needs to go straight first. So you'll notice on the track it needs to go straight first. So um, so this next set of code is just going to be the robot running straight on the line. That's how we're going to get this to work. And the way that I usually do this is I just start off by running all the motors at the same speed and at the um, same positive value, so um, start motor, not sure what happened there, fine, I know I need four of these because I have four motors. So we'll do this in order that we did it on our robot. So port one was actually front left. Port two is back left. Port three is, or port nine is back right. And This one should be front right, comma, comma, okay, and we'll just, at first let's just run it at 50, it's not going to be very fast, but we can always adjust that, 50, 50, the faster you run it, the more it's going to curve at the beginning, and you're going to have to overcompensate for that. So, essentially, the robot should, I mean, if, if the robot were perfect, which it is not, um, running all the motors at positive 50 would make it go straight, right? But there's all kinds of factors that play into how the robot actually reacts once it is started. Um, there is, there's a slight slope in the floor. Here, the concrete floor, it's not exactly level, like it's off by like 0 0.002 degrees or something like that. We measured it last year. So that is a factor in making the robot lean to one side. Um, some of the wheels, might one might be just ever so slightly looser than the other one, which can be a factor for how it reacts. So. What you're going to end up doing is when you put this down, and I'll show you in a video, you're going to see one or all the wheels spinning in the correct direction. And if they're not, there's a way to fix that. Um, some students put negatives here. 
you can actually go back into here and just click reversed and then you can keep it in that positive direction. Um, we do have to do that. I know for a fact that that's going to happen because there's the motors are flipped on one of the sides. So we have this and I'm going to stop right here and I, hold on, I forgot something. Um, not going to stop there, so wait and this should be, I'm just going to do five seconds and then stop motor. Front left. I'm trying to stay consistent here, and then I'm going to copy this. Copy, Control C, Enter, Control V, Enter, Control V, Enter, Control V, and I'm just going to change these. Well, let me back. Back left. This should be back right, and this one should be front right. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot that whole chunk right there, that um, having the motors run for a certain amount of time and then being able to stop. So I'm going to hit save, and then in this next video, um, I'm just, uh, I'm going to try and test it. and. I'll talk about how this is supposed to work.